so many storylines heading into Southwick, but there can only be one lead story, and it's Hayden Deegan. You know, it was the 450 class that was supposed to be predictable, with Jet cruising his way to a dominant championship, while the 250 class was supposed to be all over the place, a cage match with unpredictable outcomes every Saturday. Well, it hasn't been. One dude is dominated, and although we've had surprise moto winners and some pretty good battles, the 250 championship is a blowout. Ironically, Hayden Deegan's loss at High Point officially earned everyone's respect. Of course, I'm talking on the bike, which cannot be denied anymore, right? I mean, that Moto One win from way back and those final two laps of Moto Two should end the doubt that he was still getting after a 3 0 start. It was an incredible day, and for someone who rides like they're trying to get tired, he doesn't. Two tens on that track at the end of Moto Two, there is no question anymore. He is a beast, and it would be silly to think that this title is still up for grabs, and his coming transition to the 450s will be anything less than seamless. On the mic, the fan base is split. It seems like a third of the fans can't stand one single word that comes out of his mouth, while a third of the fans would defend him if he roundhouse kicked a monster girl in the face. Then, there's the third in the middle, who would be a little embarrassed if it was their son, or brother, or friend mouthing every week, but deep down love it from an entertainment standpoint. That is me. The talky talky podium and presser talk is fun to me as long as it's not directed at a dude laying on the concrete. He's worn me down, and I now anxiously wait for his podium interviews just to hear what he's going to say. And what he's doing right now on the microphone is good for the sport, even if you hate it. It's becoming obvious who his targets are. Tom Vial got a bunch of it in Supercross while he was Hayden's biggest threat for the title. Then it was Levi Kitchen at Paula. Didn't want to hear any of this Levi hype, did you, Danger? Chance Hymas got it next at High Point, and my guess is Ty Master P will get some, if he dares do that again. But the reason why I'm totally here for it is because it's clear as day that when he gets to the 450 class, he's going to do the exact same thing to the bigger fish. Jay Coop will get it right away, then chase Hunter and Jorge, and when he's ready, when it's time, he'll take it to Jet as loud and ruthless as possible. Three years from now, maybe two, let's just hope the sport knows what to do when it gets here. Southwick, however, won't be easy for him. In fact, I think he loses this weekend. It was one of his worst tracks last year, finishing 4-10 for sixth overall, a week after his first win at Redbud. He spent time riding there last week, which is lame. You shouldn't be able to do that, especially at a unique track like Southwick. But whatever, he's now up 32 points, and if he keeps going 1-1 or 1-2 every weekend in this class of chaos, he could win by 50, maybe even 75 the biggest gap in the last five years was 45 by Jet in 2022. You know he'd love to beat that, but can he beat the 110-point gap that Aaron Plessinger had in 2018? I doubt it, but at this pace, he'll beat AP's Moto win score that summer, which was 11 and was incredible. Nice work, cowboy. Moto by Moto, the 250 class is still the best class to watch because of the depth at the top. Take Danger out in the battle for second with Chance Hymas, Tom Bial, Levi Kitchen, and Joe Shimoda is pretty dang good. It's a 23-point gap, and the next three weeks of track brutality will most likely split this group into two. Happens every year. Chance Hymas runs second. He's a West Coast kid who excels on the hard-based tracks where traction isn't always available. We're getting into the sandy and loamy part of the season, and if he continues to push for top fives and podiums over the next three weeks, circle Washougal as his first national win. But don't be surprised if a run of five to sevens come next month too. He's still new to the front, and the grind of the summer is about to start being felt, and that usually hurts younger riders the most. Three great tracks coming for Tom Vial, and he's my pick to win the Wick, where he won his first pro motocross overall last year. Dang, that 4-8 high point was a big bummer to his championship aspirations, and the mistakes he's made this summer have him looking more like a traditional sophomore than a two-time world champ, which is why he's 38 points behind Hayden Deegan after four rounds. No better timing than right now for Tom to drop a 1-1 on the board and begin the climb back into contention. Levi Kitchen seems out of contention, and what started out as a streak of five straight podium motos has turned into three straight motos of uh-oh. His teammate and fill-in, Ty Masterpool, seems to have an upward trajectory while Levi has begun going down. I'm still a big believer in him long-term, especially next year in the stadiums, but the summer hype has dwindled quite a bit and fast, while Joe Shimoda is warming up. I'm feeling a big month for Joe. Don't be surprised if after Washougal, four rounds from now, Joe Shimoda is second in points. 
It's just a feeling, but don't say I didn't warn you. In the 450 championship, if you drew it up perfectly, you'd have an eight point gap between the top three in points with Jet Lawrence in third. That sounds fun. But in reality, Jet has won three of four, is back on a three moto win streak, and did it while never looking or feeling close to 100%. That crash mathematically gave us a gift, but I think we've been living in a short term and false reality. I'm headed into the weekend optimistic that Hunter and Chase can give him some this Saturday and keep this thing feeling close but the next three tracks are playgrounds to Jet, and with the extra week off, this may look a little different Sunday morning. Hunter Lawrence has become Old Steady, the 95% version of Jet, and will most likely be his biggest threat moving forward, especially in the short term, even more than Chase. Jorge Prado and Hayden Deegan are coming to challenge, yes, but right now, today, Hunter sets up perfectly as Jet's biggest hurdle for another championship. Hunter knows him best, knows where he's strong, and knows where he's weak. And if Jet's focus strays over to Chase the next few weeks, Hunter will capitalize. The better Chase does, the better it is for Hunter's championship hopes, as a one-on-one -on -one against his brother isn't option A. Not yet. Chase, on the other hand, may need to start considering his option B and chill out and just finish. His championship odds are way better in next year's Supercross against Jet on a newish 450 to develop, and maybe he shouldn't risk ruining 2025 just to gamble in 2024. Make a pivot, build, learn, try things, perfect things, Anaheim. As much as I love seeing him send it every moto, hoping he stays up and pulls off a win against the unbeatable, it may not be the right time to go all in. I'm not saying go Supercross safe, I'm just saying dial it back a bit and staying off the ground the next three months might be the better play. Justin Cooper continues to impress. He's doing the exact same thing he did on 250s. Fast lap times, whole shots, lead laps, then a couple four or five motos, then right back to the front for a moto or two. The dude is beyond reliable and is probably the most underrated rider in the sport. I'll say it right here, right now, Hayden Deegan, Chase Sexton, Justin Cooper for motocross of nations. Don't do this doubt him and think of 100 different options thing like last time. He's the one who won his class two years ago when we won at Redbud. Book his flights and book this. He'll lead multiple laps this weekend at Southwick. This week's privateer shout out goes to Dean Wilson. Yes, Dean Wilson, he's one of us. He's traveling around the world, racing in all these different countries, showing up on stock bikes. I love it. He was in Brazil this last weekend with Ryan Brees, and I'm thinking, you know what, Dino, he's one of us, but you know what? He's more than all of us old school privateers that travel the world making cash. Dino is a very popular figure. He's very likable. And for this sport to grow in new markets and, and, and maybe draw people back to the sport of Supercross, we need people like Dean Wilson out there with his personality and his skill set, traveling the world, racing all over the place, making his cash, but doing a big service to the sport as well. So this week's privateer shout out, my man, Dean Wilson. See you next week. Thank you so much for watching the show. If you liked it, press the like button. And if you want to subscribe, then press the subscribe button. Share it with your friends, with your family, and grandma. Make sure you send it to grandma. Grandmas love everything Main Event Moto does. Uh, all you moto heads out there, we are still rocking and rolling at Main Event Moto. You can go to patreon.com slash main event moto. We do two shows a week now, and both of them are live streamed. Patreon.com slash main event moto, and we will catch you on the next show.